Good morning friends and happy new year. So today is the 1st of January 2024 and as you can see behind me I have been busy canning from yesterday and today. So what I have here is some chicken bone broth. I made that yesterday. It is all fine now to take these rings off and to put the date on the top of the jars um, which I would put in yesterday's date. I just want to show you though, out of all, I started canning last year, throughout the year 2023. I've made chicken bone broth a few times now. I attempted pumpkins, that was a big fail. I made a rebel canned Alfredo sauce. I got a video on that, I'll leave that down below. Um, oh, orange juice, of course, I got a video on that too, I'll leave that down below. I'm thinking, I was like, there is more that I've canned than just those few. So I haven't canned lots, but I have done a few bits of canning but throughout all my canning I have not had a jar that hasn't sealed until today hang on so if you hear that pop and you can maybe see on the lid how it moves and goes in that is not sealed whereas the rest of these jars and all the other jars I've canned throughout the whole year There's no pop. They are all completely sealed. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, first time it's happened to me. I don't know why. It could be something, some residue on the rim on either the lid or that. It just happens, I suppose, sometimes. But either way, I should have, I wanted to wait and I was supposed to put this in the fridge last night, but because I didn't, I do think this is now wasted because it is a chicken product, byproduct from chicken that's been out on the bench. So, that's not at a safe keeping temperature. Um, and because it's not sealed, I feel like it should have went in the fridge. So that probably is wasted now, unfortunately. But the rest is all fine to be out and they've all canned successfully. Anyway, so I'm just waiting to get this water to boil. I have my new pot here as well, which is beautiful. And, and what we're gonna be doing today is a recipe in my new canning book I got gifted for Christmas, we're going to be making the, it's on page 178, mango habanero wing and dipping sauce. I'm making two batches of this and I'm adapting both of them. <laughs> so, of course for vinegar and hot sauce, I'm just going to, instead of having hot sauce, I'm just going to use extra vinegar. Sugar and honey is fine. It asks for five habanero peppers, halved and seed. These peppers are homegrown chilies from my parents' garden that I harvested and froze back in April, technically now last year. Um, so I've just taken them out of the freezer. This is definitely more than five. I don't know the variety of chili this is. Um, it's got a medium heat, I would say. So I'm gonna just use half of this packaging for one batch and half for the other batch of sauce. So that's what I'm substituting the habaneros for. The garlic we will use, and it asks for four cups of chopped, peeled, fresh or frozen mango. I have frozen mango in the freezer, so we will be doing a spicy mango sauce. That's just what I'm gonna be calling it, a spicy mango sauce, as well as a spicy peach sauce. Peaches were $2 a kilo at Coles, so I have brought I don't even know how many kilos worth, probably five maybe, I'm not too sure. Um, they're all washed, dried, everything ready to go. There's my garlic ready to go. So I'll be doing one lot of this recipe with the mango and another lot with peaches. So it's a spicy peach sauce. So that's what that water is for, is so I can get these peaches blanched because we do want to peel them. So once this water comes to a boiling, we'll blanch these peaches in for a minute. We'll do that together. First time cooking anything really with peaches. Um, first time canning fruit. So very exciting. First time making a sauce. Well, I've made sauces, but like a sauce to can. Um, and then the leftover peaches, because obviously, so we're going to... So we're going to be blanching the peaches, remove the skins, and then we're gonna cut them into slices. Um, the four cups I will kind of cube, and then anything else for the peaches, I'll do slices, and that's just going to be canned. We'll make a light syrup, and we'll can, just have canned peaches on the shelf as well for the remaining of these peaches, so I'm so excited. I'm gonna keep this tea towel here because that's going to be handy. And now let's put in some peaches. So just carefully wanna put in the peaches. Wow, 
Right, I'm just done 10 just because that water level is quite high. And we're gonna give it about a minute and then the peaches can come out. All right, so now they're all kind of floating. I think this will be good enough. It, the water hasn't came back to boil, but that's fine. It's definitely still hot. I do have some cold ice water off to the side here because we don't want to cook these peaches. We're purely just poaching them. We're not poaching them. We're just, I can't think of the word. I did say it earlier, but just to remove the skins, blanching them. That's what we're doing. We're just blanching them to try and have easier way to remove these skins. Let's put in another 10 in the pot. And these will be fine to come on this towel. This towel is clean. Um, I only use it just to rest those cans after they came out the canner yesterday. So these peaches can come rest on here now they're cooled. Oh wow, you can see that already. <laughs> it's coming right off. That's good. I'm gonna put in some more fresh ice cubes in this water. All right, so I just done four more. So in total, we got 24 peaches that we're working with. Um, I've just turned off the heat for this pot. I put the lid on, the water's still in there. And I'm gonna use this water to heat up my jars because the sauce we're gonna be cooking on the stove, it's gonna be hot sauce. This is all spotty, this is just water. <laughs> splashing out from that um it's going to be a hot sauce going into the hot canner we're also water bath canning i'm going to be using my pressure canner because one this is already out my other very big pot is in the fridge with soup and i don't feel like dealing with that so i'm just going to be using this um but we will be water bath canning not pressure canning so i don't need to use these gadgets or dials or anything um but we'll get to that now let's peel these peaches all right so it's not a extreme amount of peaches that we're working with. Um, I'm gonna start with this one because it's already peeled. You can just feel, kind of see how that skin's wrinkling off and that, yeah, split open. So that's very, very easy to peel. So hopefully the rest are all the same. I think cutting them will probably be the most trickiest part, but I was tossing that between if I want to start even getting the mango sauce on the stove cooking. It only cooks for 10 minutes. So I think, I think I'll just do these peaches. Unfortunately, I got lucky with that first one that's kind of just split itself and peeled. These are proving to be difficult. They're coming off in tiny, tiny little pieces. I've even got a knife to try and like take it off, but I don't know. I don't know. So I feel like this is a longer process. I don't know. I feel like maybe I should kind of slit, cut into them and then put them in the blanche water. I might try that maybe. Because this is quite hard. It's not. For some reason it's making sounds at me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't get the skins off. And this isn't the first one. I've dug into this one. <laughs> this one's like really hard. So I might cut it. This is what I'll do. We'll cut down the peach. And I'll pop this back in the water and then hopefully that can loosen up. I'll just do it with a couple. Actually, I might as well do it with a couple that I can't get the skin off. Okay, putting them back in the water didn't help. Getting them from the stone isn't helping. What I've resorted to is trying to cut them from the stone and I'm just using my knife and I'm just going around. I am unfortunately losing out on peach flesh with the skin. But that's all I can think to manage. Hopefully I'll find some more easy ones like the very first one. This is the perfect ideal way we want it. But 
so far it's not working like that. So I'm just hacking at it. I can't even get the stone out of this piece. Some pieces are crumbled. So, I mean, it works out that I've got two different projects in mind. So all the ugly, already broken pieces, once I get this skin off, so I'm just going to, I got a chopping board. Um, so I'm just using my knife, taking off this skin. So the ugly, broken pieces will be handy for the sauce because it has to be chopped up and cooked and blended up anyway. And I'm trying to still be nice and neat and careful with them so I can have some pretty slices for canning just generally the fruit. But yeah, unfortunately this is taking a longer process and it's not as fun because it's been difficult. But it's what happens sometimes and at the end of the day, I have these peaches, I want to use them, I want the end product. It's a little bit more hard work, but it's going to be worth it. So here is what I've already tried to get with my finger. This is obviously skin, so I'm just now taking the knife. And because we have blanched these, it's a little soft and squishy on the outside. This will probably be a lot more easier if we never blanched them, but that's okay. So I'm not being too predictic, but I'm also am trying to get all of it off. And whether I want, see like this is still fine, I guess. I don't know how thick of slices I want to can. I probably will half them like this. It's like a half slice, I don't know, it might be okay. But for now, this is going to go into the pile for the sauce because they're in smaller pieces. <laughs> so I've got my ugly peaches um, diced up. I don't think that's quite four cups. And we got our slices, still some ugly slices, still some really beautiful slices. All in all, I think out of the 24 peaches, I had three that pitted perfect and peeled perfect. There was still a couple that did pit perfect, like come off the pit perfectly, but the peeling was difficult. And there was also some that was the other way around. It was such a struggle to get off the pit, but the peel came straight off. But for the perfect peaches, we got three. The rest was a struggle. Now I'm getting our other ingredients ready for the sauce. So I've just peeled some garlic. I got eight cloves of garlic because the recipe calls for four cloves of garlic. I'm making two recipes, one using peach and one using mango. So we want eight in total. And when I'm doing my garlic peels, I'm gonna add it to this bag of frozen veggie scraps um, because we're going to get a couple of these bags over time when we're peeling and chopping up whatever rather than taking it straight to the compost. We're gonna make some um, save these for some vegetable broth. So this is the start of our first bag. And now let's come back in the freezer. So I got my food chopper here. I only got this like processor, not a blender. Ideally you would want to use a blender, but we're just going to be working with what we have and I'll show you how we'll do that. So I think, so I don't need to clear out, clear out this container. The vinegar, sugar, honey, and the chili and the garlic all gets processed together. And then I'll put it um, one to the side, one in the pot. And then I'll do the, um, so I'll do two lots of that, both lots for both different sauces. And then I'll do the pepper, I mean, the peaches, and then we'll do the mango. So we want to add in, just gonna crush the garlic cloves and we're gonna add in four in here. Make sure that was on correctly. <laughs> All right, so that's the garlic for one recipe. These chilies are defrosted, so we're gonna add about half. Oh, these are smelling spicy. I'm nervous for this. I mean, it is gonna, I would do one like a hot sauce, but I hope it's not too, too hot. So maybe that's a little bit less than half. That is all in all. Know, a couple of tablespoons of the chili which I have got already sliced and most of the seeds are taken out but I really was not fussy when I was taking out the seeds so there's still a lot of seeds left in there white sugar we want two tablespoons honey we want two tablespoons and now the vinegar it calls for one cup of vinegar plus quarter of a cup of hot sauce hot sauce is generally quite vinegary and to be honest I might even just do one cup of hot sauce 
I mean one cup of vinegar. I think that's gonna be fine and that's going to fit in all fine. So we'll do our one cup of vinegar. Like that. Okay, what I'm going to do, because these chilies are not choppy like I wanted them to. Wow, it smells good. Um... So this pot I am going to be cooking the sauce on. I'm just going to strain, strain this. Oh, that is spicy. <laughs> okay. And now let's see if we can get this. To be chopped up a bit finer. Not really. Mm. Oh well, it's gonna do. We're just going to have lumpy bits in our sauce, but that's fine. All right, so this is exactly what we have just done with the vinegar, chili, garlic, honey, and sugar. So I'm just going to pop this in the bowl. This will be for our second recipe. What I think we'll do... <coughs> oh, sugar. We'll set this aside. Whew. Okay. <laughs> we don't need to rinse this out because this is all going to get combined. But what I want to do first is the peaches. So my cup here will measure out four peaches. Like four cups of peaches. One, I would say I think the peaches I was having such difficult with them because I think the majority of these are underripe, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, the flavor ends up being all good. So, I got one, two. I'm probably just going to blend these two cups, um, add it to the pot, and then we'll blend up another two cups. And then I also need to chop up from this bowl some peaches. So I'm just going to go through this bowl and pick out the more ugly ones um, to chop up and try to leave the more pretty, the more pretty slices to can as the whole fruit. All right, so we got two pe uh, two cans, two cups in there. We got another cup here. We'll just pop back into this bowl. And we'll see if this is another cup worth. I might need a few more. So the rest of these I'm just going to still put to the side again and now we will, I need to wash my hands, now we'll get the first lot of peaches blended. I'm thinking about maybe straining and adding the chilli back into this, that might blend really well. So, so if I strain the vinegar from the chili and garlic. I mean, the garlic blended pretty well. It's just the chili. And then I feel like if I now add this. And I feel like if I now add this into here, that should become nice and smooth. This liquid can come back into this pot. I am happy with that and now all of this can go into this pot it smells so sweet now with the peaches I'm hoping it's just be like a sweet spicy sauce 
And you can see there as well, the chili, you can still see the chili, obviously, much more smaller. So that did work very well doing it that way. All right, now we'll add in the last two cups of diced peaches. And then once this is blended up, this sauce can start cooking and then we can start blending up the mango. Before we do the mango, I am going to rinse this now just because I don't want the peach flavor in with the mango sauce. Um, otherwise, all the other ingredients is the same, but we already got the chili and garlic in the vinegar section already prepared for the mango sauce. So I'll scrape this in here. And we actually don't need the lid for this recipe. So we're going to chuck this up on a medium high heat. I'll get this all mixed together because I haven't mixed it yet. So you can see this is a nice smooth texture just with some chili throughout, which I actually quite like the look of that. I'm very happy I did strain the chili again and blend it with the peach though. So yeah, very happy with that. That is already simmering on the stove. That happened within a minute. Um, so I've started my timer now for 10 minutes. This is the diced mango. It's just your Coles brand frozen chopped up fruit. You can use fresh mango. Um, it says in the recipe you can use fresh or frozen fruit. Um, so I'm just going to count out four cups. I'll do the same. I'll do two cups, blend it, take it out, and then blend another two cups just because it's like a food processor, not an actual blender so my capacity I can't do it all in one um because these are also chopped up a bit bigger and there's more gaps and still frozen I'm gonna kind of mount up these cups maybe at least three I don't know we'll see and with this mix here you kind of can't tell with the camera but this is the vinegar with the chili and the garlic and the sugar and the honey i will strain that and do exactly the same as a peach and get that all blended but just because now i want this done before that's ready and i still need to heat up my jars i'm just going to get this all done mixed up and done, ready and then we'll come back to ladle up that sauce reread and it says if you're using frozen mango make sure it's thawed and i'll show you why you want your fruit to be thawed I thought it wouldn't matter too much because like when you make smoothies, that's why we have mango. And I just used this whole packet. It's just under four cups, but close enough. Um, yeah, when you make smoothies, it's all frozen. But this is like essentially just made mango sand. So I'm just going to let this sit in here. Even some bigger bits got caught up there. I'm just going to let that sit and calm down. Um, like defrost a bit and then we'll try again. So that's okay. Otherwise, I suppose now we'll get the jars ready for this because we want to get the jars heated because this is a hot sauce. We want it to go into hot jars and then into hot water canner. Okay, there's the timer. We'll turn this off. So that should be all right there. I'm just now getting these jars. So this is the half pint, which is pretty much 500 mils. I'm just filling it up. This water is still hot. It's a little bit discolored because this is what we blanch the peaches in. It's not sticky water though. I did kind of test that. It is still very hot water though. All right, so now what I want to do is grab a jar that's nice and hot, take out the water, pop it on my towel, use my canning funnel. I don't have a ladle, so I'm just going to use like a quarter. Actually, this is a third cup measure. But that's fine and just ladle on this hot sauce so I'm just gonna be working one at a time so then if I have all my jars out here they're gonna start cooling pretty quickly if they're empty oh how much headspace do we want a quarter inch headspace this is a little headspace tool so if you put the jar up here that gives you one inch that's what i generally can most but we want a quarter inch so all we need so the jar brim will be right at the top here all we need is this piece to be the headspace Which, to be honest this isn't 
flat. So yeah, normally, I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, so normally one inch headspace, I'll go like this, which is just pretty much one inch headspace. Really need a quarter inch headspace, so I can still feel quite a fair bit of sauce in this jar. Feels very weird to me. I've never canned anything with this much headspace. I can still get more. Hmm. Oh, I do have one chunk of peach in there. I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm now gonna be taking my toothpick and go around to kind of debubble. Again, I'm new at this thing as well. We just wanna get out the air bubbles. So you can just kind of see. That should debubble. And then even after so doing this, you want to double check your headspace. So you can see how that's not touching the sauce. So that's good. So I got some white vinegar on here. I'm going to go right around the outside to get rid of anything that's spilt or any residue. Pop on a brand new lid. This is a brand new ring. It doesn't have to be a brand new ring. You can reuse finger tight. And there we go. So this is going to set to the side and be ready. We're going to keep going and work on the others. Bah. How beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited. I need to remember as well, this is the peach. We're doing the peach first. All right, so this is the mango sauce has now just started to simmer. This looks pretty much identical to the peach sauce. Um, color wise so I don't know I might I was going to I can fit all of these oh which by the way I also made four this one's a little bit shy um but that's fine so I got four more jars also heating up for this but I was going to do it all together but I think because of how similar the colors are I'm just going to do these four and then we we'll, can process a separate batch um so once this is done heating, we will get the can on. Actually, no, first, I'm just going to wipe down the bench. I've started to tidy up, but we still need to make simple syrup for these peaches, which the simple syrup is in this book as well. So I'll just find that recipe. So this has a really good guide on different fruits and how to can them. So we want to do peaches. I'm going to be doing a raw pack. I'm not going to be cooking these peaches. So we want to pack halves while well, I've done slices um, into hot jars, a ladle with the hot syrup and syrup type. We can choose either light or medium. I'm going to do light because it's less sugar and then raw packing. Okay, see, so yeah, this has to be separate again because these sauces, both batches only process for 10 minutes. For some reason I had in my mind, everything's processing in 10 minutes, but it's not. These are, I'm gonna do 500 mils, which is your one pint. Um, so 25 minutes, so they do take, I'm glad I read that because I had in my head, everything was 10 minutes. So I can choose either the light or the medium syrup. And what that is, is the sugar percentage. So I'm going to go with the light because it's less sugar. So we want two and a quarter cups of sugar with five and a quarter cups of water. That will give us a total of six and a half cups of syrup. And it states here that each one one quart jar of fruit requires about one to one and a half cups of syrup. I'm doing half. So one quart is the same as one liter. I'm doing half size jars. Um... So yeah, I'm pretty sure I can get away with just one batch because this isn't many um, peaches. I'll probably get two, maybe three jars. So yeah, I just like 
how it has these guidelines and then I also have your more different recipes but very cool book I'm very happy with this all right I've now taken this one off the heat the mango sauce I really do not want to forget so these four is peach I need to remember that didn't rinse this out that's fine everything else is rinsed out <laughs> And the recipe does state as well for the sauce, it should make about five cups worth. They only got four, not four cups, five jars. And they only got four jars of this one because when you do simmer it, it does evaporate. It's done by measurements, not by weight. So me only getting four is fine. I'm totally fine with that. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna keep along with this. I didn't make the simple syrup yet. I'm gonna make it in this pot. I'm just gonna wash this pot out. And then we'll make the simple syrup in this pot as well once we get all of these dried up. Just realized I haven't tried any, so from the can actually I'll use this. So from my measuring cup that I used to scoop, I'm just gonna taste this. So this one is the mango. It's nice and thick. I do like the consistency. I'm nervous. I like spicy food when I'm in the mood for it, but I don't like too spicy. Wow. Oh, wow. The first is the fresh fruity mango. Sweet. And then like, the spice kicks in. Mm-hmm. That's good, but that is spicy. That's like my borderline of spice. But I feel like, oh, okay. When you eat it with something, that's gonna, that throws a kick. I'm keen to bake like wings, just basic salt, pepper, garlic, wings, chicken wings, and then have it with this. But we definitely need something cooling, like coleslaw or something on the side to just cool your mouth down in between bites. Oh, it was tasty though. Also, we managed to get three jars um of the mango so we got pretty much four jars of the peach three jars of the mango now let's do the simple syrup all right so now this pot's all nice cleaned out and dry we're adding two and a quarter cups of sugar this is a half cup measure so that's one cup two cups so two and a quarter so i'm just gonna I will half this measure. And then we want five, this is a one cup measure, five and a quarter cups of water. So I'm just going to turn this on medium, give it a stir. And once this water warms up, the sugar will dissolve and then it'll be our syrup. I'm just going to reread the book though, just to make sure if it does specific, specific just to make sure if there is a specific time I need to heat this for. All right, I've cleaned my benches. Now we're going to get these jars prepared with these peaches. So I'm just dropping them in one at a time. And you can see the really beautifully ripe peach, how beautiful they are. And unfortunately the rest are hard. We've been eating these fresh though, and they taste fine. So I'm sure they're going to be fine. But we just want to drop these and we don't want to like jam pack full. So I'm just kind of dropping them in one at a time. We want the syrup to go over the fruit, leaving half an inch headspace. So I want to keep that in mind. Probably leave it like that for this jar. Probably leave it like that for that jar. This jar might not be as full, but that's okay. Yum. So much of this natural juice, I'm just going to tip in. And there we go. Just to heat up these jars, I'm just going to place them in this water and that will heat up just fine. This water's definitely cool in it. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Oh no. Hang on. 
got an empty jar here. Ah. You know what? We're not going to heat these jars up. I think they'll be okay. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't say you have to heat these jars up, but I always thought you need hot jars with hot liquid in a hot canner. And we're hot packing this. I don't know. We'll see how we go. Okay, so this just says to bring to a boil, sugar will dissolve, turn off the heat, put a lid on and make sure it stays warm. And as long as it stays warm, you can use it. If it cools down, just reheat it. So it doesn't really matter. We just, yeah, want to bring it to a boil and then we can use it straight away. Which we no longer need this pot. So then I can have the can up here. We can get this filled up and we can get these sauces done. That's what I like about this pot. Not only is it cute, I'm loving gold accents lately. And this color is just beautiful. But it is also smaller than my pot I have now. So this is too much liquid for my saucepans. And if I had my other pot, I can't have this can on. But look how much room. Like obviously the handle's in the way. But look how much room I have in between the two. If I was pressure canning, I wouldn't have nothing up here. But wood bath canning. And I mean, this is just going to get the water heated up anyhow. Because it will definitely be done before this water gets heated. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just good. It's nice. <laughs> so I'm using just hot tap water to fill up this can now. I mean, these aren't piping hot anymore. So this is a good temperature. We want to make sure... I'm going to put all these jars in and then we want a couple of inches headspace of water like above these jars oh hang on i need to remember which flavors as well so these i know i'm telling you right now i am going to forget these four are shoot peach <laughs> that's just noisy just because it's a bit of water on the bottom there but this is about to come up to a simmer which is nice so we got four jars of peach i'm going to put mango in the middle and mango on either side closest to me so mango is in a triangle let's see if i remember this or not now from the uh, top of the can to where this water is it's about that so I'm going to put in a little bit more water. We'll probably want it up to about here. We want a couple of inches. All right, so this is now on high. I'm putting, somehow I've got sauce up there. I'm setting this lid on. I am not locking this lid because we are not pressure canning. And I want to set the timer once this is at a rolling rapid boil. So not locking it. I can easily, but carefully look. Um, Realistically, don't even need the lid on right now, but it's just going to make it come to a boil quicker. But yeah, this is water bath canning, not pressure canning, but I am using my pressure canner. <laughs> All right, so this is our syrup. All that sugar is dissolved. It's very close to a boil. I'm gonna turn that heat off. Just let it sit there still on the heat for a little bit. I need to wash my canning funnel and then once I got that washed and dried, we can fill up these peaches. I got my half cup measure. I really hope this isn't going to break my jars. Here goes nothing. And we want, shoot, I don't remember how much headspace. Okay, so we want to cover the peaches and also have half an inch headspace. All right, so peaches are covered. So for half an inch, it's a second noggy. So th I, this is a really cool tool. And I've also learned this end you can use as a bubbler, but that's fine, I can use a skewer. Um, so half an inch. I mean, these peaches just kind of flow. I think that is fine. As long as there is room for them to be submerged. half an inch headspace so we can add in a little bit more syrup smells so good 
Okay, I'm fine with that. And although this is not full of peaches, I still want to fill up the jar with the syrup, I think. I think that's what I want to do. <laughs> I don't know, I'm new to this as well myself, but. I am going to use this. I was to get out another skewer. I am going to use this as a debubbler. Just because I feel like that skewer. Oh wow, okay. I, I saw what just happened there. So if I turn this around, see right there a big bubble. So if I push this down, see how that's coming out and see that? So that's what we want. We want to get rid of those air bubbles. This is where I think I went wrong with my Alfredo. I did not debubble it and uh, every jar overflew. Wow, I've never actually seen, seen the bubbles like that in any of the products. Even the sauces, I, I didn't quite understand what I'm looking for and what what I was doing but that makes sense now but it is just recommended to go around the jar a couple of times so I've learned that now with my um, a Fredo sauce and even when you debubble that headspace does go down like that syrup line so we all had it pretty much on half an inch space. This is like three quarters of an inch. Uh, between three quarters and half. And pretty much three quarters. Actually, even an inch. Or just below. So, now we've checked that. We do want to go back and top it up with more syrup. And again, you want to make sure to grab your vinegar. Because these jars... Oops, are definitely sticky. So you really want to make sure they're nice and clean because that sugar will make it not seal or possibly make it not seal. Or even if it does make it seal, it can make it unseal in the future. Um, where did I put my lids? Where did I put my lids? I got one lid and ring here. I thought I had them all out. Um, same thing, finger tight. And these are just going to sit and wait until, until this is done, the sauces are done with water bath canning. I do, I'm going to get some more lids. I don't know where I put them. I thought I had them, but guess not. <laughs> it has taken over half an hour for this to finally come to a boil. I always forget when I do do canning projects and it is a little frustrating that it takes so long. The peaches should have taken probably 10 minutes to peel. That was my expectation. In reality, it took me over two hours. 10 minutes to process these. Again, in reality, over 30 minutes just for the water to come up to temperature for me to then start the processing time. So I don't have my time on now. I was going to make pad thai and dumplings for dinner tonight being the first day of the year that's like one of my next favorite foods especially like with my home cooking it's one of our favorite things that I personally make I'm exhausted <laughs> my feet hurt in between all this I have been doing cleaning jobs random deep cleaning I've cleaned all of my stainless steel I've had tooth I'm um, not tooth pad uh, earbuds in between little cracks and crevices I've deep cleaned Lena's water fountain bowl with the filters and everything Laundry is on, the dishwasher is on now, so sorry if you do hear that in the background. And don't get me wrong, I am enjoying myself. I've been having a good time. In between me filming, I have been putting on music, but I am tired and I am, my feet are hurting. It's, it is a full day. Canning, as much as I thought this would be an hour and a half, tops, not even <laughs> from start to finish. Oh, yeah. I've been here for about two o'clock and it's now currently almost 7 30 at night I still got the water the garden to water so yeah and I say I'm pretty sure I said this in my last cleaning video too it's just like I always forget on how long my expectations is like oh you a couple of hours and I'll get boom 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 this done but it is a long process so I'm not gonna be cooking <laughs> tonight for dinner I don't know what we're going to do um I'll figure that out, but 
yeah i just wanted whoops whoops so yeah, i don't know what we'll do for dinner i'll figure that out but yeah i just wanted to because if you are thinking about canning i mean do it if you're thinking about doing it and you've got an interest in it absolutely do it just be more mindful because it is a little disheartening when it does take such a long time um and like i said now mine are next in the plans which we were excited for is now at the window i mean i could still do it i'm not going to though i'm gonna rest um but this has about six more minutes to go i'm excited to take these out of the canner and see how hopefully they all seal hopefully they all seal and to see how they go and then the peaches have to go in now that this is up to temperature those peaches that will be much quicker um so realistically i probably should have had this going for a while and used back here on the pot when i was even heating up the sauce but again i'm new at this i don't can every day and these are little things that i've realized now that i just need to remember i'm pretty sure i've realized this last time i just got to remember for next time <laughs> All right, so they've been in, whoops. All right, so it's been in for 10 minutes. It is going to be hot with the steam. So we want to quickly but oh so carefully. Ooh, take off this lid. Remove these jars. Oh, hang on. <laughs> what flame was that? Okay, I was standing near the triangle that was peach. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe I almost stuff that up. Just didn't even think about it. Okay, peach. I'll get all the peaches out. Peach and peach. Do you remember the triangle part was mango because there was only three mango jars. I'm sure you guys are close up, but the colour is very, very, very so close, like very similar. Hope these are going to be okay. These have cooled down a little bit, but we're now going to put in my peaches. Because these are lighter jars, the water is not covering, so I do need to add in some more water. Uh, I'll just use this pot, I guess. I got it all washed out. Well, I did have this pot all washed out and dry, but that's okay. <laughs> It's just water, it can dry again. And the same thing again, although these are larger jars, we still want the two inch amount of water above the top of these jars. So now I've got the can of peaches in there. When this did start to boil, um, even more rapidly than when I first set the timer, I turned the heat down to medium. So now because this is not back to boiling, it's going straight up to high. And we'll pop the lid on, we'll wait for it to boil, and then we'll set the timer again for 10 minutes. No. 25 minutes for the peaches. I'm so glad I remembered. These peaches have to can for 25 minutes. Yes, glad I remembered that. <laughs> and these are extremely hot, so I don't want to touch them. But these three at the front here is the mango. The four behind is the peach. You can kind of tell here, the mango is just slightly more vibrant than what the peach is. Very, very slightly though. All right, the canner is going. The time is on, it's boiling for the peaches. I have remembered is 25 minutes and I'm just kind of bored now. <laughs> I'm sick of cleaning rather than just sitting here. I did sit down for a bit and just kind of scrolled on my phone on social medias and things, but I'm like, you know what? I will do pad thai. I'm not gonna do dumplings, but I will do pad thai. So dinner is still on. I've made our sauce. I wasn't gonna film just because I am getting tired, but now I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to share. So I do have a video, it's pretty old, but I will leave my just my pad thai recipe cooking video down below if you are interested. The sauce I've done, I mean, I kind of wing it each time I make it now. But this time we have got honey, fish sauce, oyster sauce, sriracha, lime juice, pepper. Is that everything I put in it? I think so. Um, and I'll just show you the ingredients that we're putting in, which is kind of fun because like half of these are just store brought ingredients, which is perfectly fine. And the other half is from my garden. So it is fun and it's exciting. So we have red onion and Wombok cabbage that I had to use up. I still got like over half, almost just under half of cabbage to use that with something. Um, normally I do get myself a little bowl, but they're all in the dishwasher. 
homegrown chili, nice and red. This is perfectly fine. It just snapped off because it was like twisted on the plant. Um, homegrown capsicum. Nick has used one for a salad. She's getting a little wrinkly. She has to get used. She's still firm. She's just wrinkly. Um, does have this little bit of a spot. I'm just going to cut that off, but it's perfectly fine. So this is my first time using a homegrown capsicum, which is also our second homegrown capsicum. A baby green homegrown zucchini. We've been cooking with plenty and plenty and plenty of those. I got a couple of carrots I will use. I got some sad looking mint I will use. I got some bean sprouts to go on top and some ginger. Did I get garlic? And I will get garlic. I swear I took the garlic out. Oh, it's in my bloody my scrap pile. Which, to be honest, this, this needs to go in the trash. These scraps to, can go into the bag. So I'm just going to make a pile here, here, and then it can go into that freezer bag. But yeah, so that's my sauce made. These are the veggies. I'm using these Pad Thai noodles. This isn't, I mean, it's not my go-to brand. I don't even know the go-to brand I generally use for my Pad Thai rice noodles, like the flat rice noodles. Um, I just know the packaging, but those are our stock, so I'm going with this one. And I will also be adding in chicken and eggs with it as well. So that is our dinner tonight. I'm not doing dumplings, um, but that's okay. We can do dumplings a different day. All right, let's so just turn off the heat and remove the lid. These peach slices are ready to come out. And not only are they ready to come out, that also means I'm done my canning projects for the day, which is a lot and took a whole lot longer than I thought. I'm so proud that I did stuck through and get them done. Also, all of the hot sauces have now sealed. I've been hanging them ping around while I've seen staying in the kitchen because I'm not leaving the can on by itself. Um, so yeah, all, how many is there? Four, five, six, seven, <laughs> all seven sauces are sealed. Oh no. I think the liquid's coming out. It's hard to tell. But I think the liquid's coming out kind of like the Alfredo. It smells so sweet. I think the liquid's coming out. Understand what happened. I thought it still could be air bubbles. Just use this to point, but see here, like that's liquid coming out. <laughs> it smells so sweet, and it's getting saturated. This one, yeah, this one is as well. Not as bad. This middle one's definitely the worst. This one done it, but I think that's kind of stopped now. This one's just keep on going. Is it air bubbles? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why that happens. Is it air bubbles? Do Have I not been debubbling it properly? Because this only happened with the Alfredo sauce and I never debubbled that. But they all still did successfully still seal. And I just had to clean up right around the edge as much as I can, as carefully as I could. So obviously, like, the sauce on the outside didn't get all gross. Um, and I always randomly check on them. And they're still sealed and they're still fine. And that was six months ago plus, probably. Um, so hopefully these peaches seal. But that middle one, I'm just watching it's still pouring out. I don't know, I should face this way because this is my nice like, cupboard and you guys can actually see it in the background there but that is all for today's video thank you so much for watching please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed hopefully they sealed i'll write on the screen here if they sealed um chicken broth yeah we went through that only one didn't seal these sauces are all sealed i'm going to take off these bands tomorrow and update them tomorrow and all that stuff um but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll see you guys next time bye